Welcome back. Today we're going to cover IBGP in this video. Let's recap some of the basics of BGP. As we all know, BGP is a routing protocol between the autonomous systems. Unlike IGP like OSPF and IS2IS, where the routing information is exchanged within the AS. We also see sometimes BGP is referred to as path vector protocol and the reason is the BGP uses a list of autonomous systems associated um, with, with, the, with the route to construct a graph and the path that it takes and through those ASs and therefore it's known as a path vector protocol and uh, just to recap BGP supports um, two type of um, pairing we have the external BGP um, sessions which are set up inter AS and internal BGP sessions which are set up within the AS. Next uh, let's take a look at uh, BGP uh, attributes um, or known as path attributes. Uh, we know that uh, BGP uh, used um, certain attributes uh, when it's carrying the route across in the BGP update. We have the three categories in the path attributes. We have well-known mandatory attributes and they must be attached with each message or update. For example, like next stop, AS path and origin. And then we have well-known discretionary attributes. They can be included, but they are not mandatory and um, like a local preference and uh, atomic aggregate, for example. And in the optional attributes, we have uh, two types, uh, transitive and non-transitive. So with the transitive uh, BGP speaker propagates the, um, this attribute across, even if it doesn't recognize it. And uh, with the non-transitive, uh, if the BGP speaker unable to recognize, it's not going to pass it on uh, across to the other peer. When it comes to peering, BGP does not support any auto discovery um, for the peering like IGPs and we have to define um, neighbors manually. BGP also uses TCP as a transport protocol and on port 179 and that means that it has a reliable transport. Next, take a look at BGP neighborship states. Um, first of all, we have the idle, which is a start event, and at this state, all um, uh, connections are refused. And the next state is uh, connect, and during this state, BGP is waiting for um, a, a, a TCP connection to establish, and the active state in BGP is trying to acquire a peer by initializing the transport protocol to the other peer. Open state is where BGP waits for open message from its peer and op open confirm is the next one and in this state uh, BGP waits for a keep alive or notification messages um, to arrive and the established state uh, BGP can exchange update notification and keep alive messages with its peer. Next take a look at uh, BGP message types. First of all, open message. Open message is sent once the TCP and transport layer session is established. Update messages are used to send routing updates across the BGP pairing. For the keep alive, BGP relies on TCP transport layer. Notifications are sent across the pairing um, to, to notify the uh, neighbors if there is anything wrong across the pairing. And finally, the refresh messages are used to allow to soft clear the BGP pairing. Once you've updated routing information, you can clear the BGP sessions so that it refreshes your routing table across the pairing. For our task today, let's take a look at uh, topology. Here we have AS100.
and we're going to peer between PE1 and PE2 using IBGP. On the left side we have PE1 and on the right side we have PE2. Both routers are connected using interface directly connected on the prefix of 10110/24. IGP used in this topology is OSPF. Loopback IP addresses are set for both PE1 and PE2. For PE1, loopback IP is 1.1.1.1 and for PE2, 2.2.2.2. Most of my trainings I try to keep topology very simple so that focuses on the subject matter. Next we're going to log on to PE1 and PE2 and set up IBGP between the two routers. Let's start the config on PE1. First of all we're going to take a look at the interfaces on PE1. We see that the interface 800 that is directly connected to PE2 is set up with IP address of 10.1.1.1 and loopback IP of PE1 is 1.1.1.1 Now config on PE2 Directly connected interface to PE1 that is 800 is set up with IP address of 10.1.1.2 the loopback IP address of PE2 is 2.2.2.2. In addition to loopback, PE2 also has four loopback IP addresses set with 10, 20, 30, and 40. Dot zero dot zero slash 24. These IP addresses will be used later in the task to advertise its prefix into BGP. The IGP used in this task is OSPF. We see that PE2 has a neighborship op with PE1. Its loopback address of 1.1.1.1. State is full. And it's via Ethernet 00. Config on PE1. Before we start the BGP config, we're going to and debug the TCP packet exchange on this router to see what happens during the pairing of BGP. So we're gonna go under the routing process of BGP in this case it's 100 and set the neighbor manually as 2.2.2.2 .2 and remote AS is going to be 100 in this case. We're gonna leave the pairing shut down and set the update source as loopback 0. We're going to go across to PE2. We're going to repeat the same config. First of all, enable the debug for TCP packet exchange. Then we're going to go under the routing process of 100. Set the neighbor address to loopback IP of PE1, which is 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. Remote AS is going to be 100 because it's IBGP peering. We're going to leave the peering shut and set the update source to loopback 0. Now we're going to unshut the neighbors on both sides. We see that the log message saying that the BGP neighbor with 2.2.2.2 is up. We can verify the BGP by using command show IP BGP summary. We can see that on PE1 we've got the peering up with the neighbor. Version is 2, AS is 100, the up time and there are no prefixes received currently. Next take a look at packet exchange of TCP.
here we see that the TCP SYN received from R1 on a source IP of 1.1.1.1 We see that the source packet has TCP port of 179 and 2.2.2.2 has a random TCP port means that R1 PE1 has acted as a TCP server. Followed by a three-way packet exchange we see that the BGP peering is up with neighbor 1.1.1.1 from the PE2 perspective. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, details of BGP neighbors. Um, we see that the BGP session is up with the neighbor 1.1.1.1. The its state is up and uptime is listed. We can also see whole host of things in this output. Uh, one of them is uh, BGP capabilities. Uh, in this case, we see that the session has the capability of IPv4 unicast. And we can also see that the TCP session details, the local host is 2.2.2.2 .2 and a TCP port is random, while the foreign host has a TCP port of 179. The TTL is listed and that is 255. Next, uh, just move to PE2 and we look to advertise um, some prefixes into BGP sort of just to look at how to start advertisement into BGP just the basics of it so we're gonna go on to the routing process of PE2 in this case it's 100 we're gonna use a network statement to advertise uh, three prefixes earlier listed in PE2 so we're gonna advertise 10.0.0.0 slash 24 20 slash 24 30 slash 24 and 40 slash 24. Now we're going to uh, jump over to PE1 which is the other IBGP neighbor in this AS. We're going to take a look at the routing table of BGP. We can now see that we have the session with PE1. And in the last output we can see that we've received four prefixes. We can take a look at the details of the prefixes by using command show IP BGP. We see that we have four prefixes received from PE2. And the next stop is the loopback IP address of PE2. The local preference is the default 100 and BGP weight and origin is also listed. 